Let's look at energy in human diets. So we're going to look at a few different types of things. The importance of energy, where we're getting our energy from, and possible consequences of taking up too much of that energy, and how our body kind of tells us uh, when to stop. So let's start over here. Uh, let's start over here on the left a little bit. Uh, energy content. You may be surprised to know, although we talk about glucose being really, really important, um, there's actually more energy per gram in fats, actually more than double the amount. You need to know these numbers. Carbohydrates, about 1,760 kilojoules per 100 grams. By comparison, proteins come in very close at 1,720 kilojoules per 100 grams. But fats come in as a whopping winner here uh, at 4,000 kilojoules per 100 grams. So you might think, well, why don't I just use fats as my main source of energy? Because I could eat less of that and actually get more energy. Well, you probably know our body doesn't uh, do well with extra fats and it can clog up our arteries and stuff like that. So um, you do need to know these numbers comparing the energy content and uh, kilojoules per 100 grams is really, really important to understand there. Um, Staple foods are considered the foods that a particular ethnic group kind of uh, uses as their main food source. So depending on the culture where you are, it could be it could be rice, for example, if you're in India, that seems to be um, their main staple food. Italians, it's pasta, pizza, and bread, I guess, if not to overgeneralize too much. Um, for a particular Hopi Indian tribe, maize or corn is their main staple food and for the Maasai people uh, they're using uh, meat fat blood and milk as their main sources of uh, of energy basically their staple foods again a balance is important overall and there are consequences if your diet is too high in one or more of these various things so obviously let's start with a carb rich diet Carb-rich diet, you've heard about all kinds of things like the Atkins diet, not eating too many carbs for people, not eating bread or pasta. The fact is you need carbs to stay alive. I mean, you can convert some of your fat stored up in your body uh, into the stuff necessary in order to produce energy. But if you have too many carbs in your diet, then that could result in too much sugar, which could lead to diabetes, particularly diabetes type 2, and then could make you obese. All right. Fat-rich diet, now we said fats produce, they have tons of energy per actual 100 grams, which is great. However, too much fat and you can actually start increasing fat deposits in your arteries. So that's a buildup of fat in the arteries there and you can cause yourself coronary heart disease. Protein-rich diets can actually cause kidney problems. So too many amino acids, uh, nitrogenous things can't get broken down. It can result in kidney stones or gout or even osteoporosis from increase of calcium loss in urine from uh, excess nitrogenous compounds in your body. So those are some things to take care of. Can you hear that beeping? That always happens at this time every single day and I cannot find where it's coming from. Anyways, we're gonna ignore it. Moving on really quickly if you take a look uh this is really interesting how we experience the sensation of feeling full so you may think it's because your stomach is 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 full and because you just crammed your stomach with tons of stuff in there but that's not actually what gives us the full feeling um three hormones are playing a role together in there uh one is called pyy3-36 and it's produced in the small intestines uh, insulin you've heard of produced by the pancreas and then leptin is another hormone produced from your fat tissues basically it's these three things that uh, send messages to your brain and in the appetite control center in the hypothalamus basically which tells you that you are satiated you are full basically and if one of these things is not doing its job and sending its actual message to the brain then you may not even realize uh, that you are full and you will overeat basically so feeling full is a good thing because it tells you when uh, you need to stop and um, you don't end up consuming too much taking in too much energy and then ending up becoming overweight or obese as a result of that there are people who have had damage to their brain particularly in this part or um, 
something's up with their leptin receptors or the production of leptin or the production of insulin and then this can severely affect mm -hmm. a person's ability to figure out when they've had enough i think i've been experiencing that recently but uh anyways monitor your weight and you should be okay with that and if you feel like you're eating too much of one of these things then balance it out balance is very very important make sure you're not doing too many uh, various things um, in Japan, I love eating something called sunagimo, which is fancy for kidneys. I'm eating little chicken kidneys, but they're just so tasty. But turns out eating all that actually ends up um, giving me lots of extra uric acid, which is not good because it can lead to gout. And I, my toe was hurting like a couple months ago. I started freaking out and I stopped eating that stuff for a while. And my blood test actually showed a high level of uric acid. Anyways... This is good reflection for me as well, too. I'm going to go get me some meat, fat, blood, and milk to eat. What else? Energy in human diets. You should be able to calculate your BMI. It's pretty easy. Just make sure you have the units uh, down correctly. It is your mass in kilograms divided by your height in meters squared. And if you do that, so you can try that for yourself right now. You know your height. If you only know your height in feet and inches, then Convert it on Google to meters. Your mass in kilograms, same thing if your mass is in, if you know your weight in pounds, convert it to mass in kilograms here on Earth. And then you can figure out your BMI. Look at your number, and then you can figure out if you are underweight, normal weight, overweight, or obese. If you are clinically obese, well, you can't decide that. You got to go to the doctor, and the doctor will say, yes, you are obese, or yes, you are obese. And that means you are clinically obese. So if your BMI is really high, then start rethinking about some of this stuff here. Um, clinical obesity is becoming a big problem, particularly in some parts of the world, tisk tisk, like America. Some of the reasons might be, uh, let's see, available cheap high energy foods. McDonald's is very attractive and not so expensive. Large portion sizes. Would you like me to supersize? that or would you like three portions of fries with that burger people are using vehicles a lot more for transport and uh you know like the segway people mover i don't know what this thing is but for moving around the office for people who are too lazy to walk that's going to cause problems these two people are probably just been hired uh for this ad probably not using this on a regular basis they probably you know eat healthily and stuff like that Active to sedentary occupations, people spend a lot more time in front of their computers as opposed to doing some manual labor. And uh, kids these days, uh, good for hand-eye coordination, playing video games, but um, playing video games. But you should consider going outside sometimes. Not to carry out those things in Grand Theft Auto 4. I mean those like tennis games. Go play actual tennis. But if you need to shoot things, then stay with the video games. Please, please, please. Another issue with energy in human diets, and I'm sure you're all aware of this, um, is anorexia. Anorexia. It's an eating disorder that makes people lose more weight than is considered healthy for their age and height. And a lot of it has to do with uh, self-image issues as well, too. If you know of anyone, if you suspect anyone of undergoing this, you might want to try and get some help. Uh, excessive fear of weight gain self-starving um, it's a psychiatric illness and it also can have social effects not just on them but on people family friends and everything like that and you know what the telltale signs are looking up this in google images was really depressing so i didn't look put some of those other images in there but this is something that's very serious so make sure you understand uh this is an important issue when we're talking about energy and human diets things get, that can happen you're basically not taking in enough energy and so um, in the form of glucose or carbohydrates so your body starts converting your fats for energy eventually when you don't have enough fat then it starts going to the final source of energy which is um, using your own protein on your body so your muscles start wasting because your proteins in your muscle become digested for energy um, it gets converted into acetyl coenzyme A to feed into the Krebs cycle and then you can start um, you can continue producing energy in the form of ATP to keep you alive that is strength is obviously down hair thinner and you lose some of it dry skin that easily bruises blood pressure becomes low poor circulation in extreme cases um, menstruation the menstrual cycle is affected and people can become infertile as a result of starving themselves in this way so 
that is just a look at a few of the things that are important about energy when it comes to human diets.